Bom dia pessoal, na aula de hoje a gente vai ver... Oh, sorry, <risos> I already started speaking in Portuguese. Bom dia pessoal means uh, good morning everyone. That's the way we greet in Brazil. Good morning, uh, bom dia. And today let's see the months of the year. Miss, the word for that in Portuguese is miss. Miss, that's singular meses plural and this is a calendar calendário 2021 calendar calendário 2021 so i'm gonna read the months for you and you just repeat after me then i'm gonna explain more details about the pronunciation of them so just repeat let's go janeiro fevereiro março abril Maio, junho, julho, agosto, setembro, outubro, novembro, dezembro. So, this is, these are the months, mês or meses. And pay attention in our calendar. Uh, before, uh, sorry, under the numbers we have some circles. And these circles here, maybe you already know that they are the phases of the moon. Yeah, that's it. Phases of the moon or phases da lua in Portuguese. Lua, moon, phases, phases of course. And in Portuguese we just say four phases of the moon. We don't use eight phases like I think American usually uh, use eight phases but we just use four and they are lua nova which are the new moon lua crescente crescent of course are you repeating after me please repeat that okay L let's go again lua nova lua crescente lua cheia that corresponds to full moon and lua minguante the waning moon uh, The, pr the pronunciation thing I'm going to call your attention for the CH in Portuguese. It does not sound like the CH in English. Okay, this is not cheia. This is not the CH sound like in change or Charlie or challenge. It will sound more like the. Um, the. Um, like the SH sounding in English, for example, in shark or cash, okay, so the CH in Portuguese, cheia, will correspond to the sound of SH in English, for example, shark or cash. As we're talking about the pronunciation of, of, of these words, now let's go to the pronunciation of some months. In, in Portuguese. First of them, I'm going to call your, uh, uh, your attention about the way we pronounce janeiro. So pay attention to the way you pronounce the letter J. It's not like janeiro, okay? It's more like janeiro, like the second G in garage, the end of the word garage, or garage, j, j, j. So, That's the way you pronounce it, janeiro, not janeiro, right? And uh, in, in janeiro and in fevereiro, we have a diphthong in the, in the middle of the word. When we have a diphthong um, like EI, okay, always like EI, maybe you can find someone that will not pronounce the, the letter I. So, it's common if you hear some native speakers saying both janeiro or janeiro, like there was no I here. And the both thing happens here. You can listen, to, you can hear some Brazilians saying fevereiro or fevereiro. Both pronunciation are okay. And I also uh, call your attention to the word, to the way we pronounce the letter, the letter R. 
when it begins a syllable like here and there is a vowel after that oh it will sound like janeiro ro 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 like the letter d you know the letter d when you say uh, i don't know when you say i don't know it's similar to this to this sound you have here i don't know or oh, janeiro it's not like janeiro not fevereiro but janeiro fevereiro mm, kind of similar um, to the way some indian speakers uh, pronounce the r sound in english as well i'm not making fun of their accent i'm just comparing so it's a, pretty, uh, a little bit easier for you to remember now let's go to march which is março and uh, i just wrote these three words here to compare the sound of letter c in março pay attention that well usually letter c in portuguese sound like letter k in english so here for example we have marco which is a very common female name in brazil but when we talk about the month of the year it comes with a little tail under the letter C. Then we, we know that we have to change the pronunciation of it to março. Not here marco with no tail and março with a tail. Also, when the letter C comes before an I or before an E, it will sound like an S as well. Here uh, you, I wrote two other common names for men in Brazil as well. They are Márcio and Marcelo. Okay, so let's repeat, please. Março, Marco, Márcio, Marcelo. And I will call your attention to the letter R here again. Here, the letter R comes in the end of a syllable in these four words comes in the end of a syllable and when we have a letter r in this position there are many ways to pronounce them the pronunciation and the accents in brazil vary a lot my accent in my accent i pronounce this r like the letter h in in english in words like hospital or hotel it's more like an aspiration. So I pronounce like Marso, Marco, Marcio, Marcelo. But it's possible to hear some native speakers also pronounce like Marso, Marco, Marcio, Marcelo. Or Marso, Marco, Marcio. Marcelo or Marso, Marco, Marcio, Marcelo. So just choose one of these four options I gave to you, and people, everybody will understand you very well. There's no um, like I don't think there's a better way to pronounce it, just choose the way that it's easier for you to pronounce and easier for you to remember. Now let's go to how the way LH sounds. When you have a letter, uh, when you have this meeting of these two consonants, LH, it will sound like Lio or Julio here. It's this, this has the same pronunciation of Julio, a very common name for men as well. And remember that letter J sounds like J in garage. So here, Julio or Julio, not Julio. The same way here, Junho. Now, uh, when we have an NH, uh, it will sound, it, it, you will have a nasal sound. Junho. Nasal sound is when 
you have air escaping from your mouth and from your nose at the same time. For example, let's compare the way the pronunci pronunciation of cat and can't. Uh, can you notice that in can't, the, way, uh, the sound escapes from your nose as well? It's totally different from the pronunciation of cat. The, the way the, the A sounds here vary a lot. Cat and can't. And the same thing we have in Portuguese when we have a vowel and letter N or letter M as well. So here, junho, we have a nasal sound here. Setembro, novembro, dezembro. Uh, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And the nasal sound here happens in the name of the moon as well, the crescent moon and the waning moon in Portuguese. Oh, crescente, minguante, wanti, enti, nasal sound. And I also call your attention about the way you pronounce the letter T. Uh, you, you can pronounce like crescente or minguante. Everybody will understand you. And we have this kind of accent here in Brazil as well. But it's more common uh, when you hear people's, uh, people pronouncing it like ch. Like the ch in, in English, you know, for words like Charlie or change or chance. That's the way the letter T sounds before letter E and before letter I. Okay, crescente, minguante, and we have a very common name for men as well, which is Tiago. See, we have a T-I, so the letter, uh, this syllable here will sound more like Ch, Ch, Tiago. Okay, but if, if it's easy for you to remember like T, T or T, Okay, everybody will understand you well. Okay, that's it for today. Um, uh, next week we'll continue looking at the calendar and the months. And I want you to... These words are going to be very useful for you when, to answer word, uh, questions like Quando? Quando something? When something? For example, when... Do you arrive? Quando você chega? Okay. You can answer em janeiro, em fevereiro, for example. And here you just choose any month you prefer. Quando você chega? It's the same uh, question for uh, em que mês? For example, em que mês você chega? Let's suppose you're coming to Brazil and someone here wants to know when are you arriving. When will you arrive, sorry. So, em que mês você chega? Quando você chega? You can answer, ah, em fevereiro, em dezembro. Or, em que meses, for, for example, in a plural form, em que meses, uh, I don't know, em que meses something. You can answer, em janeiro e fevereiro. Em corresponds to in, in this case, in fevereiro, in, uh, in february, in january. That's it for today. Next, next week, next Monday, I will post another video regarding vocabulary about months and dates as well. Let's, I'm going to uh, teach you the numbers, okay? Thank you for today and see you next class. Obrigado por hoje. E vejo vocês na próxima aula.